Hi, I'm Michaela, an elementary instructor with TechWise Academy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be making one of my favorite projects on Scratch Junior. We're going to be making an alien planet. We're going to be using lots of different tips and tricks to make it really look like an alien planet. Kind of like things are floating, we might have some different sound effects, all of those different things. So we're going to go ahead and jump into Scratch Junior. And then I have Tick on the screen. This is Tick. If you have Scratch Cat, that's okay. But I'm going to first off start with my background. This is going to be my planet. So I'm going to click on this little area. And any background would work, but I specifically like the jungle one. And I don't want it to look like just a jungle, so I'm actually going to customize it, paint it. And I'm going to use my fill can and change it to be a whole bunch of different colors. So I like this to be black, I want this to be black, and maybe our water is orange, this waterfall area in the background, maybe the sky is this like light green, and let's have some blue plants. So this one, that one's fine. I'm going to do pink right here. This still looks kind of jungly, so I'm going to change my little mushrooms to be purple. Perfect. Actually, let's undo that. And then I, for whatever reason, it made it small again, so I want to make that big. Awesome. And then let's have these little sunbeams. So if I wanted to change that, I could change the color of that. I could change the sunbeams to be kind of red like that. Um, let's not go with red blue. Let's go with this like bluishy color. That looks better. It's kind of giving like a glow. And then I'm going to do this light pink for this plant. And maybe this side can be red. And I want dark blue to be these like vine looking things, kind of make them look like trees. And then I want to change this green part so it doesn't look like grass or moss. I'm going to have that be yellow. And I'm going to have this one be this lighter purpley color. Perfect. I do want to change this plant up in the front because that is, it looks like a plant and while that's okay, I don't want it to look like a plant, but it's behind this little sunbeam. So in order to do that, I need to use the mouse and then drag the sunbeam kind of over a little bit so that way I can change the color of this plant. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to change the colors of the trees and I think that they should be purple trees with I don't know if I can change the stem color oh I can sweet beautiful and then when I'm done I can just go through and move everything back to the front because it's in layers so I think there's only one more thing that I want to change and that is going to be the grass and let's have the grass over here be gray awesome this is now my alien planet. I don't want tick, so I am going to press and hold on tick to delete it and then go away. And I'm a big fan of tack, tick, this is tick, tack, and talk. These three are all my favorites, so I'm going to add tack in there. But I want tack to be unfamiliar to me. So I'm going to change tack's colors up just the same way I did with the background. And then I want this color to be the hair. And we can add some green pops back in there. Beautiful. I can change the outline of Tick. So right now the outline is purple. If I wanted the outline to be red, I could click on it ever so slightly and it would change the outline. And then I want Tack to have blue shoes. And then let's do... What happens if I do this? Oh, okay. We'll do that. And we'll put you over here. And I'm going to get a couple more other creatures that live on this planet. Maybe I have this little fly. Let's customize this instead so it doesn't look like a fly. And let's do, let's do this color. Perfect. Love it. I do want this one to be a little bit bigger so it is a little bit more obvious. 
So I just dragged out the make bigger block and put it in the workspace. And then my last character will be a fish. I'm gonna customize that so it looks less familiar to me. I like this greenish blue and then let's do black. Black, black, black. Beautiful. Now with this, I have three characters. I kind of want it to be so that the characters are floating almost, like gravity isn't really a thing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my fish, or my alien fish looking thing. I want it to go to the right, but while it's doing that, I kind of want it to go up and down and spin. So I'm going to have it do it when I tap on it. And I forever want it to keep, actually, I don't want it to do, to do forever. If I did, I would put it this way. But I'm just going to have this repeat. And let's see, right now, Scratch Jr. has placed my fish at spot 10. And I wanna go all the way over, or I'm sorry, spot four, because I wanna go this way. I wanna go all the way over to spot 20, so that's 16 spaces that I need to have this repeat. So this line of code says I will go over, and I'll go over one space. Was that 16? Nope. I'll go over one space one more time. Was that 16? Nope. And it will continue to go all the way over until it has gotten to the end, or until 16, which is at this point the end. So this will make it go over to the right. And I wanna have it go up and down too. So I'm going to have it jump. And the reason I'm not putting jump in here is because I want it, I want this fish to do it at the same time. If I put it in here, this means that I will go over and then jump, over then jump, over then jump 16 times. I don't really want that to happen. And I'm not changing this number down here because this is the number how high I will jump. So I'm on spot number 10, one, two, that's 12 and then back down. That is what that line of code says. If I wanted it to jump more than one time, I would need to put this one or a repeat loop. And I am going to use a repeat loop. And I'm gonna have it do, let's go three times. And then I'll end this code as well. And then with my tack, or I'm sorry, I want the fish. I forgot I wanted three things. When I tap on the fish, I also want it to turn. I want it to turn this way, and I don't want it to just turn one time because if I do that, it only turns a little bit. I want it to keep moving in a full circle. In order to do that, I will change this to a 12. So I clicked on the, the number and then changed it to a 12. That way when I click on it, it'll do a full circle as opposed to just going in circles like that. So let's do three on this time as well. That might not be the right number to get it to go across the screen, but that's the number I'm going to try it out. When I put this in full screen, I can tap on the fish. Now it kind of looks like the fish is bouncing. Looks like I need to spin a little bit less. So let's make this two times instead, and let's make this four times. What happens if I do that? Oops, I forgot to have my fish start over. So I've clicked on it. I'm happy with that. It kind of looks like my fish is doing it forever. Now, if I want to change these to be a forever loop, all I have to do is put the red block back in and put the forever loop at the end. Now when I click on it, it'll just kind of look like the fish is floating by in the background. And then they'll just keep going. As for the fly, I think I want the fly, let's see. Will the fish bump the fly? Yes, I believe so. Let's move you down just a little bit, just in case. So with this fly, I want the fly to, when I am bumped, I want the fly to make it hide. Uh, just kidding, I need it to be bumped, so I need it to show up. So we'll make it hide, and then we will make it wait, and then we'll make it show itself, and that way so it doesn't automatically go invisible again, we will make it wait, because otherwise it would go invisible, invisible, wait, show itself immediately back to invisible. And we're gonna have that do it forever, and then, Let's have a sound effects on this one. 
So when the fly is bumped, it will, and I'm recording a custom sound right now. I went to the sound and then I went to the microphone and then I recorded my own one. So this is the save button, this is the record button, and this is the stop button, and this is the play button. Beeple, beeple, beeple. That's going to be my custom sound. And I'm only going to have it do it one time because I don't want it to go on forever, though I could do that. And then for this tack creature, whichever creature this is, this creature is going to... Let's have this creature jump up and down. And forever. That's what this creature is going to do. Perfect. Tack, you can stop. Let me send all the creatures home. And then, so the fish goes when I tap on it. The fly goes when the fish bumps into the fly. And then tack creature thing goes every time we hit the green flag. So I'll click on my fish. Oh no, my fish didn't bump my, my fly. That's not great. We're going to... We'll make you go right here. Now maybe you'll bump it. Will you bump the fish? Yes. Okay. There we go. My fish should bump it. I have to hit the green flag first because if you notice, tack wasn't moving. That's because when I if I hit the green flag first, tack will move. But if I click on the fish first, It'll be a stop sign over here and it'll stop everyone. So green flag first, and then we can click on things. And I don't know if the sound effect was recorded because I think my microphone might be using it. But that's a little bit about how to make an alien planet. So I hope that you were really excited about it. I would love to hear some of your alien creatures. What, what did you do to them? What were their customizations? What were their backgrounds, all of that. How did you code them? What adventures did the aliens go on? So there's a lot of fun with this one and I hope you enjoy making your alien planet.